morning everyone, it's Carol here with Tokas Journals. It's a bit of a rainy morning here in the UK, in sunny Lancashire. Well, it's not sunny this morning, um, but it is going to clear up. So I thought I would come into the craft room and do the next prompt in Junk Journal July, which is being hosted by Meg. Details in the description box below the video if the challenge is new to you. So as I said, I thought I'd come into the craft room and make a start on the next prompt and see how far I can get whilst it's drying up outside and um, then maybe nip out later on and do a little bit of gardening. So where are we at? Well this was the page or these were the this was the page I created last time. Let's get it right. This was the page I created last time but it was two prompts. It was prompt number eight which is brown paper and prompt number nine which was balance. So over the page here um, I've got this section here for stripped back. Now to me stripped back means the bare essentials. So what I thought I would create on this page um, is just a little interactive piece. Now I know one of the prompts later on is to do something interactive but um, this to me is a junk journal and it's not all about collaging and I do like interactive bits and bobs in my journals. So I'm going to make use of this. I'm going to do very little to it at all other than make a little interactive piece. What I am going to do though is I'm going to bring in my texture paste and my stencil um, so that I can take this over onto this page here um, and have a bit of a flow from this side onto here. But that's about it really in terms of decoration to the background. It's got a very fine pink line going through it here, so I'm going to make use of that. I also thought I would use some little washi stickers. Now, these were the ones that you saw me use on the previous page. Um, and again, de product details are in the description box. So my first job is to get some texture paste on the page. So let's get on and get that done. I'm using Stumpers Anonymous Tim Holtz Collection Mini Layered um, stencils and this is set number 25 which is one of my particular favourites and I'm going to use um, let me show you uh, this one that little one there which is the one that I used on the previous page so as I say trying to keep the continuity going from one page to another now I've got texture paste at the bottom here so I'm going to have it up here um, I need to bear in mind what I want to put here. So what have I got? I've got a scrap of paper on my desk. So yeah, I'll probably make something about that size really. I need, if I'm going to use this rose here, um, I'm going to need to pull this over a little bit. So, hmm. I was thinking I was going to use, let me take that off, I was going to use this sprig, same as I did last time, this one down the centre, but I might just have to use these, thinking about it. So, yeah, I'm going to have to do that. So I'm going to go with that one there. Okay, finally made a decision. So let's do that. That's a shame because I really wanted to use the entirety of that sprig up there, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so whilst that's drying, I'm going to go away and wash these and I'm going to decide, let's pop those off to one side, I'm going to decide what page out of this Nature Notes of an Awardian Lady, the infamous Edith Holden book that we all use. What I want is a page that has got the same sort of creamy background as I've got on that blank ledger page and this book is absolutely lovely for that. But I don't want an image that's too big, I want an image that's um, fairly small, even that is going to be too big and um, I need to just flip through here and see what I can find. 
you see that one might be quite nice um, because I can chop off the top um, but it's got this here this text here and I won't be able to or this little poem by Coleridge rather I won't be able to get that on my piece so I want something that's pretty isolated and small so it's just a case really of flipping through here these might be nice um, that one's a bit too big these two might be nice to use the journal that I'm doing is more botanical so I want something that will work on that front oh, there we go this Winberry image is going to be perfect because I can cut so that the stem of this ash doesn't show there's only a little bit of text there and I won't be using that so yeah that's my image okay so I'm going to get going on my insert whilst my texture paste is drying and I will be back at the end with a little bit of chat and some close-up photographs to, for you to have a look at what I've been doing. So I'll see you in a minute. So here I've just got another piece out of the Edith Holden book and I'm going to use this as the base of my little interactive piece. So I'm cutting a piece of paper 15 centimetres wide by 10.5 centimetres high and here you can see I've cut two pieces and I'm just folding them in half and now I'm going back to that image that I liked and I've cut the image to the same height as my inserts but wide enough so that I can fold it around and create a pocket so as you can see I'm just burnishing my folds there and checking the height and width of the pocket against the little bases. I'm not doing any measuring, I'm just folding the top portion that's created, creating my pocket round the uh, insert piece. This one I had a bit of spare paper left over, so I'm just trimming that away, straightening up the edge <laughs> and checking it against the insert. So here I'm taking the pocket piece and I'm just finding the centre at the top, marking it on both and then opening it out and just doing a little thumb notch on both of them at the top. And then just trimming away a little bit of the excess off the back and then closing the pocket up. This is the insert piece and you saw I folded it in half there and just put a thumb notch on either side and then I'm gluing my little pocket on the top so doing the same with the second one. Gluing up my pocket at the back and gluing it along the bottom. There's my insert marking the center on the side, punching a little thumb notch and then gluing the pocket on three sides to the front of the insert. And there we have it, really simple, just trimming away any slight overlaps, so simple. So here I've got some of the Tim Holtz uh, ephemera snippets labels, and I'm just going through them, auditioning which one I might like on the front of um, my pocket got several there so as usual I'm auditioning everything finally decide on that one here I've got a scrap of green handmade paper and I'm just mounting it the Tim Holtz label on on top of it and doing the same with the second little um, ephemera piece that I've just created just so that it gives a bit of interest but it's also giving a pop of color or deeper color against the images on the front of the pockets just roughly tearing them and then dab of glue, popping them down one on top of the other. This one I actually had some writing on the uh, to one side of the image so I'm covering that up. Here I've got a couple of layers of brown paper and I'm roughly tearing these to create journaling spots for inside my little um, folders if you will or interactive piece just roughly tearing them and 
and using one as a guide for the other so that I can get them more or less the same size. I'm not too bothered. There we go. And here I'm showing you that I've stitched round with a couple of lines of machine stitching. And I'm just flattening out the stitches on the reverse, adding a dab of glue to both pieces and then gluing them inside. And this is the second one. And now I'm going in with some little washi stickers just to add a little detail inside. At this stage I'd forgotten about the prompt being stripped back because I've done some stitches, stitching and now I'm adding stickers. Um, but I really felt it needed something, um, just a little detail. So that's why I'm adding the stickers. And I've got here some paper tape and I just wanted to add this little touch to the side of the um, little ephemera piece just to give a bit more interest on the on the page so I'm just gluing that on before I actually glue it on three sides and popping it on my page but I'd forgotten <laughs> that I wanted to add another little pop of colour by adding another washi sticker so I've lifted up that corner and I'm just putting the washi sticker in place very quickly before that glue can set and I'm just adding a little bit more glue as a belt and braces and there we have it so here we go everybody this is my finished page and as you can see really really simple and it's just a little flip with some pockets so I've got room for a little journaling card to go in there. I can journal here and here. I can also put a journaling card in this side there and there is place for another one at the top there. Really simple idea um, but as this prompt was stripped back that's exactly what I wanted to do. Just go for something very minimalistic and simple. I've just done some brown paper inside here to tie it in with this page and also with this page to a certain extent and stitched all the way around the outside for a little bit of interest I couldn't help myself actually um, and then use some washi stickers here and here I put another one in the back there as you saw I glued down my sides and then realized I hadn't done that so luckily this portion here hadn't glued by that stage or glued permanently down so I was able to just raise it a little bit to get my washi sticker in there and I just wanted to get a hint of green to add a little um, hint of colour when this is closed. I've left my threads loose but I think when I close it up it's a little bit too fussy having all the threads loose and as you can see I've not stitched um, sorry glued right to my edges so that I can get a little bit of uh, movement there but I'm happy with just these threads hanging down just a few and you saw me use a piece of paper tape as decoration down this right hand side and I wanted to do that just to kind of bring the eye from these points down to the, um, the center and um, here I've just used one of the Tim Holtz uh, ephemera pack snippet labels love those so I've used one of those and a little piece of handmade paper there so now I need to go away and make some little journaling cards to go in um, here and this is the other one that you saw me make um, this was the top portion of this piece of paper in the Eden Edith Holden book but it was on the reverse and I've just done another one exactly the same and that one can be glued in a book like that so even the design of these particular little flip things 
is super easy if you wanted to before you glue this top portion on you could stitch round to add some detail on the outside but I've just left mine super super simple so there we go everybody that's my um, finish page for this prompt which was stripped back hope you enjoyed seeing it and I hope you'll join me for the next video to do the next prompt which is prompt number 11 which is uh, paper samples if I believe if I remember rightly so until then everybody um, have a great time happy crafting keep smiling and I'll see you again soon bye bye now